playing 37 minutes a game, which is about seven minutes up from last year. That, that's a pretty significant amount. Kind of how, how are you dealing with that? I'm um, taking it good, you know. It's just it's just a matter of having your body in the right condition, and he does a real good job of making sure we're well conditioned, make sure we get enough rest in between games. So when we're playing those amount of minutes, uh, we'll be able to produce the whole time. Do you feel like you're wearing down? I know it's really early, and, and you're obviously getting the week between games, but do, do you feel it affecting your body at all? or? Uh, at the beginning of the year, it was a lot different because, I mean, you know, I wasn't used to playing that many minutes, but I'm, not, I'm starting to warm up to it, starting to get used to it, starting to be able to, you know, stay my game the whole course of the 37 minutes. You know, it's just getting getting used to it. You know, I'm not the only one playing 37 minutes. You know, Jimmy plays a lot of minutes, too, so we just been to make sure our body's been in the right condition for it. But he's only playing 35, so you're the only one playing 37. Yeah. <laughs> but he still plays a lot, though. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. It seemed like last year, you and Mason kind of worked some of had good nights together. What's been the difference this year? We're like the other night. You know, you had a big night too this night from him. I think it's just a system, you know. I mean, even last year, uh, it was just a matter of one of us just not being able to make shots. It's not like we were getting, taking bad shots. We just weren't able to make them fall the same night. But, I mean, our system that we have now is um, well orchestrated and we were able to get shots in the floor of the offense. And being able to do so, it's going to allow us to have multiple nights where we're both on fire. How's it been trying to, because last year with so much attention to Daniel, like Mike Mossman said, you don't have that this year. What would be kind of adjusted to get get open and stuff? Uh, we just we just have a lot more movement, a lot more cuts to the basket. Because you know Dan um, occupied most of the paint most of the time, but even that that freed us up too because we were able to drop it down to him and he'd be able to spray out on occasions. But uh, now we just have a lot more off ball screens, a lot more movement, a lot more cuts. And you know everything that we do, even plays wise, is just constant movement. How is JD Note done as far as you know mimicking Freeman Liberty this week and maybe all season in terms of scout? Oh he's done a great job. I mean our whole scout team they've been doing a great job. They're the reason that we're being able to play great defense on these teams because they're they're a great scout team. When we go into the games we know exactly what they're gonna do. Uh, I mean they take it serious and that's gonna help us throughout the season. You think that Liberty Bell sound does that really kinda resonate with you guys? <laughs> yeah, I mean it kinda it, it coordinates to his name so every time we hear it we know that we have to shrink on him. So now now when we play him in the games, every time he has the ball, we're going to shrink on him. We're going to make it difficult for him. And what's his attitude kind of been this whole season, JD's, about having to sit out a year? Um, I mean, he's taking it. He's taking it well. He uh, he knew coming here he was going to have to sit out, so there was nothing that weighed on him. He just knows that he's got to put in the extra work, be ready for next season. That's what he's doing. Well, what kind of impact has Khalil had on you guys? I guess as a student coach, or I guess that's his title or role. Yeah, Khalil is, I mean, this is his family, you know. We formed a brotherhood. He's just always there for us. Even though he wasn't fortunate enough to play his college career, he's still, he's still stuck with us. He's doing everything he can to help the team off the court. And um, without him, I mean, he just, he's just one of those pieces that he's like a glue guy. He, stick, he keeps us all together. Yeah, yeah like, like, how, how, like how, for instance, in your experience, how does he help you? I um, mean, he's, he's staying on me all the time, making sure I'm in the gym, making sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to do off the court. Uh, I mean, even... When it's not related to basketball, he just wants to have hang out, you know, hang with the guys, have a good time, you know. Um, it's just it's just everything good vibes around him. I guess you've seen glimpses of him. You haven't been able, you know, to play. But if he could have played, how good do you think he could have been? Oh, he would have been very, very good because you know he's a he's a big guard. He's a slasher. He can finish with both hands around the rim. Plays great defense. Uh, his overall game is tremendous. So I mean, especially with Coach Musselman here, he would excel greatly. Yeah, and Eric has said a couple times that. You know, a tired Isaiah Joe is still better than 90% of the players you probably could put out there in college. Uh, but what, what do you think about him saying that? I mean, it just shows the trust that he, that he has in me. I mean, it gives me a lot of confidence on the court, being able to play my game, being able to play freely in the system. Uh, uh, and he, I, mean, I feel like he does that great with all the players. He shows that he trusts you, and he's going to allow you to do what you do best. And you're, you're averaging over four rebounds, about two steals. I mean, it seems like you're doing more stuff. Obviously, you're a great three-point shooter, but you're more than that. Obviously, you're taking charges still. How do you feel about your all-around game? I'm definitely, I'm definitely trying to, uh, you know, make my all-around game a lot better. Because last year, I mean, everybody knew me as just a three-point shooter. I want to show that I can do more while still knocking down a three-point shot, and I feel like I'm being able to do that so far. Do you like playing in North Little Rock? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, close to home. I love it. You're gonna have a lot of fans there. Um, all the Little Rock fans are gonna be able to watch us play. All of our family, because we you know you got a few guys from Little Rock, like Khalil, um, Ethan, Desi from Jonesboro. So I mean, we're gonna have a lot of family there, a lot of friends, and a lot of fans gonna be fun. From your perspective, you know, Khalil, he obviously came here to play ball. He wasn't able to do that. 
from your perspective as a player, how's he handled that? How's he dealt with that? Oh, he's dealt with it great. Like I said, I mean, he hasn't really taken it, taken it to heart. He's still, he's still here for us. He's gonna show that he's here for us. He's gonna do whatever he can to, to help the team off the court. You know, he's, he's kind of turned into a coach in a way. You know, just being able to, he still pays attention to all the plays, all the little details. He helps us out whenever in the games. If we don't recognize something, he'll let us know. Well, watching film of Alpo, kind of with what's your take on that? <laughs> Freeman is gonna take all the shots. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, but he's he's definitely um, their key player. He's taken, he's made 98 shots so far, and nobody else on their team has even attempted 77. So we do we gotta lock in on him. But um, not just not to discredit any of the other guys. They're also great players too. They all like to run and transition. They can knock down open shots. Some of them can also get to the bucket. So we just gotta play play um, how we know how to play. Final question. That, that level five chain that Moss passes out after wins, I guess. What are your, your thoughts on that? It's kind of a unique deal, I guess. Oh, it's, it's definitely unique because um, last year we didn't do anything of that sort. So. Go talk. <laughs> Go talk. That was Mason Jones over there, the guy, the guy, the one with the 41 points. You know, he did his thing last game. Um, that's my guy. But the I love five chain. I mean, it, it's great. It gives a lot of people like motivation to go out there and play hard. You know, you're trying to earn the level five, and basically just level five, just doing whatever it takes to win. Whoever he feels comes out and does whatever it takes to win the game and, and helps us win that game. That's when you get the level five chain. So I mean, it, it's fun. How bad do you guys go on it? Oh, great. Yeah, I mean, everybody everybody wants a level five chain. It's a nice, I mean, if y'all have seen it, it's a nice size chain. It's a level five. You got the diamonds in it. Uh, everybody wants to rock that for about a week. Uh, so, like I said, it's just going to give us a lot, real motivation to go out there and play hard. So if you get it, do you wear it around campus or what, <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, if, we get, if we get it, we're going to we'll wear it around campus. We'll wear it out to eat, you know. You just sport it, you know. I mean, just let people know that you got the level five. They must have joked with Mason that he was going to, he should have worn it to his finals this week. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, Coach Mess is a funny guy, so he made a joke. Um, you can wear it in your finals, it's going to give you good luck. So <laughs> I don't know if he did or not, but hopefully it gave him good luck. Thanks, sir. Yep. Thank you. <laughs>